Bonjour and welcome to a Palace Fan TV reaction video because Palace have signed Johan Kabai. Da, 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 da. I don't know the words to the French national anthem. Yep, Palace have signed Johan Kabai, and that's why I'm dressed like a stereotypical French guy. A uh, little bit xenophobic. I apologise, but I'm going to take the the beret off. There you go. Um, I'm celebrating because Palace have officially announced that Johan Kabai has joined the club. Uh, I'm drinking champagne, so cheers. Uh, it's not actually champagne, it's some um, elderflower, because I don't really like champagne. I think it's just kind of gross. Ah, so there you go. Uh, I'm in a happy mood because Palace have signed Johan Kabai uh, from PSG, and uh, everyone is incredibly excited. He's turned down Champions League football to come and play for Palace to get regular football. He wasn't really playing at PSG that much. He's going to be the first name on the team sheet at Selhurst, undoubtedly. And uh, I'm sure Pars will probably try and build the team um, around him. It's a huge signing. It's, it's signing of the summer, you know, not just for Palace, but arguably in the Premier League because he's a world-class player. He's an absolutely quality, quality player. And at 29, he's arguably at the peak of his powers. And that's probably one of the reasons he wanted to come to a team where he's going to get regular football. It's probably a bit surprising that bigger teams didn't come into him. Uh, Arsenal were reportedly interested. That never happened, apparently. So, and, uh, and obviously West Ham uh, were interested. But I did say bigger teams than Palace and uh, West Ham clearly are not. Because we finished above them last season. So, um, in your face, West Ham fans. And uh, it's, it's, it's just very exciting. It's crazy, and uh, it, it really feels like Palace are taking that first step towards the next level of football team. We said, didn't we? Each season they've been building on it, and last season, 10th, 10th finish, best uh, finish for us in the Premier League. Are oh, Palace going to build on that and really make a statement? And signing goodbye, you probably can't get a bigger statement than that. Um, so it's absolutely crazy, and uh, I can't really tell you how excited I am. I, um, I didn't really sleep very much. Uh, last night because I was so excited with the news uh, that Kabai might be signing. It's kind of been escalating over the last couple of years, uh, last couple of days even, not years. And uh, I, I just feel a bit, a bit crazy. Twitter's been going crazy. The forum's been going crazy. Everyone's been losing their mind. But it's so nice for a right reason. Normally we lose our mind because Palace got financial problems or because we're signing Kevin Doyle. This time we're losing our mind because it's, it's a huge signing. And I would say probably our best ever signing. Now, yes, Lombardo, probably a lot of you are saying, and quite rightly, Lombardo was brilliant, but this is better than that because he's younger. Lombardo was 31 when he joined, Kabai is 29. And the Lombardo thing really felt like a gamble, like a sort of shot in the dark. You know, this is the, we were a small team, we'd just come up, we were looking to, I don't know, try some sort of long tactic, and that was to get Lombardo, and that was it. You know, the rest of the players we signed were okay, some, you know, Paul Warhurst, some good players, but it wasn't like we were building on a team. This is building. This is putting a cherry on top of the cake. You know, Lombardo was the cake. That's all we had. And of course, it didn't work out. And then, of course, it went to administration. This all makes sense. There's money. You know, money from TV is here now. These are the sort of players that Palace can, can go for. There was rumours he was on asking for 100 grand a week. It's a lot of money. But, you know, if you want to be a top 10 team or even go for a European spot or a cup run, these are the sort of signings you've got to make. And it's so good to see Palace really being bold. If this was any other team, if this was West Ham... I'd be looking at them thinking, wow, fair play, that's a good signing. It's Palace. It's our Palace. And they're doing this, so it's brilliant. It's, um, hopefully there's going to be uh, ramifications in the form of other players coming. There was a report that Kabai wanted assurances of Palace's transfer targets before he agreed to join. Uh, now he has, you've got to think that maybe there'll be other players coming. We've been linked with Remy. Um, we've been linked with Charlie Austin. Um, Ashley Williams at Swansea. Remy, I think, has gone a bit quiet uh, Charlie Austin seems to be gathering momentum. Uh, so, you know, if he comes in as well, and we've got him up top with Kabai supplying uh, the passes and, and Balassi and Wilf, I mean, that is a very, very strong attack. And I think we should all be incredibly excited because, you know, we could be on the cusp of something really great here at Palace and uh, making these signings is only going to help that. Um, what it will also hopefully do is convince those players that have been linked with a move away from the club, like Yannick Balassi, who've been linked with Spurs, uh, to stay and to show to them just how serious Palace are about really consolidating on that top 10 finish. Scott Dan being linked with a uh, move away from the club as well. That's more of a family thing. Uh, his family uh, are from Liverpool. 
And I think one day he does want to return up there, but he linked with the move to Everton. And a lot of Everton fans weren't even sure that he was going to start for them because they think that Jagielka and Stones are better, which is ridiculous. Um, but hopefully now he's going to stay in his reports that Palace wants 16 million for him. Uh, so that's kind of warding off Everton's interest. Uh, so hopefully now, you know, goodbyes here. That will at least convince Dan and Balassi to, to stick around for a bit because they're going to be part of what is a very, very good team. The only thing really to try and think about is uh, where's he going to play? Because he, our midfield was probably our, our strongest position last season. Uh, and you've got uh, Ledley and MacArthur who were brilliant together. Uh, Jed and Nack, of course, missed a bit, quite a lot of the season um, through uh, playing for Australia and then didn't really sort of get back into the team, but still has a role to play. And of course, Punchin was your man going forward. So where will Kabai play? Will he be that forward one uh, in the hole, meaning Punchin loses out? Or will he play a bit deeper, uh, meaning uh, MacArthur or Ledley or Jed Nack misses out? I think actually he might play in both. I think depending on the opposition you play against uh, will determine where to play him. We saw last season, punch and thrived both deep and moving moving further forward, depending on who we're playing against. You know, And sometimes you need a Jednak. Sometimes you play against West Brom, you need a Jednak in there. Um, so that might be the time to push Kabai further forward. But I think we'll see him in, in probably in a couple of different positions. There won't be one set there. But that's the nice thing about this squad. We've got players that can do that. We can rotate. We can change it around uh, because we've got strength in depth. A lot of strength in depth, really, particularly in midfield, because he's still got uh, Lee and Jordan Much uh, in there as well, who are two players that, that show they, they can definitely help. And uh, last season, they uh, they show promise. So there you go. Kabai is here. He's, he's joined. I'm going to go off and practice my GCSE French. I've got an A, so, you know, I'm probably pretty good. Just in case I bump into him, you know, in Beckenham or, or whatever in Selhurst. Um, I'm going to continue drinking my elderflower. As well, so cheers. And uh, let's just enjoy this for what it is, because this is crazy. But it's a uh, time for us to be very excited and enjoy being a Palace fan. I think it's going to be a fun couple of years, guys. Hopefully, at least a fun season. Um, so cheers. Uh, welcome, Johan. Bienvenue à Crystal Palace. There you go. There's my, there's my French GCSE coming through. Um, as ever, here's Jay from the Eagles Beat with his thoughts. I doubt he'll be dressed like a Frenchman like me, but that's just a sort of commitment you know, that I put to these videos. Uh, we'll have loads more videos throughout the season at Palace Fan TV, so subscribe and uh, follow on Twitter um, at Palace Fan TV and uh, let us know what you think of these videos. Comment below, like it if you like this reaction video and you want more to other signings or whatever. And uh, yeah, we'll see you again soon. Um, au revoir. Hi guys, welcome back to Palace Fan TV. It's been a while since we've done one of these videos, but it's a time to celebrate. Um, I said hello, maybe it should be bonjour. We've welcomed the French midfielder to Palace, uh, Johan Gabay. It's been, the rumours have been bubbling around for a long time actually, past few weeks and uh, you know, the scent or the trail uh, to, to Sellers Park has got hotter as uh, recent days have gone on and uh, social media has been very lively with, with, uh, with all the news and all the ifs and buts but um, now we can finally say that Johan Gabay is signed for Palace. A former Newcastle and PSG player is now uh, about to uh, wear the red and blue. And it's going to be fantastic to see him playing for Palace. It's it's a signing of intent for Palace after finishing 11th and 10th in the Premier League. And it's you know it's that scenario. What does a club like Palace do from now? Do we continue to look you know look behind us and and, and want to finish 17th, or do we look further up the table? And I'm I'm pleased to say I think this signing says everything about the intent of the owners and the club and, and the management in that you know we can we want to improve and, and and that's the best thing to do you know we've got money coming to the club on a regular basis and we should be signing uh, players of this caliber um, and I expect one or two more after after Kabai coming in I'm, I'm really hopeful that that's going to be the case to in to to ever improve our first team and and, and increase competition you have to ask you know how's Kabai going to fit in I mean he's a quality player I remember uh, we lost 3-0 to Newcastle uh, in our return to the Premier League and he ran the game. I mean, you know, it was, it, it was a 3-0, it could have been worse. I mean, he he, in, he was instrumental in that result for uh, for the Toon Army and it was a very convincing win because he was uh, he was a key player in midfield and, 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 and did a lot of good in that game and I, I remember that really well. Um, going back to the Lombardo signing, uh, for me, this is as big as that. Um, you know, he's still got to prove that he has it. Um, I've no doubt that he does. Um, I'm just hoping that he continues to be hungry. But for me, European Championships are 
um, you know, are in France next next summer, so he's going to want to impress and, and want to be playing in a competition in his own country. So, you know, there's a carrot for him, and, and obviously that's you know a real bonus for us. I mean, it, you know, it's a fantastic sign. As everybody said, I'm not sure what else I can say. And uh, you know, he really is a, a top caliber player. I've spoken to Newcastle fans, and and they've all, while they're gutted to see him come to Palace. They've all said that he's, you know, he's one of the best players they've seen playing a Newcastle shirt. And I even had a Sunderland fan say very similar in that he's the best player he's seen playing in in the North East for a long, long time, which is praise indeed from you know from a rival fan. So, yep, looking thoroughly looking forward to him. Quite excited by the prospects, as I know you are, and I feel a bit. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of the third sign and we've had after Hangeland signed for us. We didn't do a video for him, so apologies to Breeder for that. And also James MacArthur signed. So in terms of how we're going to set up, that's going to be really interesting to see. But it obviously gives Pardew options. You know, Punchin, Yednak, Ledley, MacArthur, now Kabai. Do we lose one? Big question. Um, Balassi out wide, Zaha out wide. I mean, it's so exciting to think how how it's going to work out. But we had a lot of options last season. This gives us, you know, even more options for the season. Um, I'm celebrating a bit tonight, wearing a French shirt, of course. And you might see a, a picture of um, that's not Crystal Palace actually. That is the Eiffel Tower in France. So welcome, Johan, to the club. Look forward to seeing you play for Palace and uh, and obviously uh, impress us in midfield and exciting times. Let's see what the rest of the summer holds for us. Uh, and if there are any big signings, then you can catch it here, our reaction, uh, mine and Jim's reaction on, on Palace Fan TV. So make sure you subscribe below um, to these videos. We'll be doing our usual videos throughout the season, next season, and really looking forward to it. So thanks for watching and keep, uh, and, and keep subscribing and, and sharing these videos. Thanks a lot.